Soloing Hardcore Mode is arguably the hardest thing you can do in Tower Defense Simulator. Most of the time, it isn't even possible, and you can usually only attempt it for a limited time when a new bug has been discovered or a broken tower has been released. Recently, with the addition of the Jester, the most overpowered event tower we've ever seen, Solo Hardcore Mode once again became possible. After seeing some people beat it, I decided I wanted to give it a shot. I had a lot of free time, and I was pretty confident I could beat it. Little did I know, this would be one of the most challenging things I'd ever done. One of the first things I had to do was figure out a strategy that I wanted to use to beat this game mode. I didn't have nearly enough hardcore mode experience to come up with a strategy myself, so I was definitely going to need some help. There were a few options available, but one that caught my eye was Witherstar's Four Seasons Triumph. Witherstar is an incredibly talented player, so I figured doing what he did should work pretty well. Also, while Wrecked Battlefield is usually the more popular map, I decided to use Four Seasons as it's apparently a less RNG reliant map as it doesn't have mystery enemies. Mysteries can summon circuits, which if you get unlucky, can quickly cause you to lose the game. In the video, the Lodi he used was the Farm, Jester, Golden Minigunner, Ranger, and Commander. On my first attempts, I struggled to get very far. I had a hard time following this video, as not only was it sped up, each step was super specific and complex. That left me with two options. Either I could keep trying until I eventually got to wave 50, wasting probably dozens of hours, or I could get direct help from Witherstar himself. So I decided to send him a DM, basically begging him to help me follow his video. He surprisingly agreed, and the next day we hopped on a voice call. During this, he instructed me on exactly what to do as I recorded the footage. While I wasn't able to beat wave 50, which was the actual hard part, I now knew the basic strategy for getting to the final wave solo. First, you have auto skip enabled and place down two level 1 farms, then a level 1 jester to defend the early waves. While jester does have decent early game defense, you'll still leak a bunch of enemies. There are a lot more steps, however, wave 12 is really the only difficult wave before wave 50. This is because the jester doesn't actually have flying detection, so the balloons are a huge issue to deal with. What you have to do is somehow get it to indirectly hit the balloons by having it attack enemies underneath them. To accomplish this, you have to skip wave 11 early at exactly 18 seconds. Then, set the jester to first targeting, and you should only leak one balloon. If you had a good enough early game, you'll be able to tank this and still survive. After that, you get a ranger, 8 level 3 farms, and once you start spamming golden minigunners on wave 19, the rest of the game is pretty straightforward. Just make sure you have enough rangers for wave 39, as otherwise you'll quickly die to lead balloons. It's also a good idea to try and stall out the molten boss as much as possible, as its summons can generate a huge amount of extra cash, which can come in handy on wave 50, as you'll have to sell and move your towers a bunch. To make it easier for myself to follow this strategy, I wrote a wave by wave google doc with exact instructions on what to do. This made getting to wave 50 much more consistent and saved me a bunch of time. Now, I was left with one problem. How on earth was I supposed to kill the Void Reaver? With this boss, there's essentially two stages you must pass. First, we have the Vindicator Rush. When the wave first starts, a bunch of powerful Vindicators try and rush past your defenses. These enemies have 40,000 health, a 5,000 health shield that grants them 100% defense stat, and you can throw their hammer, which ricochets between your towers, stunning them. On top of all this, they have a pretty fast walking speed, moving at the same pace as a normal boss. Because of the way the hammer bounces, you're going to need some pretty good RNG and perfect placement if you don't want to die. If you somehow manage to kill these guys, you now have to deal with the Void Reaver itself. And trust me, that is not easy. It has 1.2 million health and 6 powerful abilities. For its first ability, it summons a bunch of Void Spheres that stun all towers within the radius. For its second ability, it does a huge stomp, which stuns pretty much all towers on the map. For its third ability, it slams down a sword, creating a line of spikes. Any towers within that line will become stunned, and for each tower affected, the Void Reaver summons a soul. Souls are a huge pain, as not only do they have 800 health and a fast walk speed, they are also hidden enemies, meaning the rangers can't attack them. Because of that, if the Void Reaver decides to attack my Golden Minigunners, it's game over. For its fourth ability, the Void Reaver stops moving and summons a group of enemies. Its fifth ability activates at half health, in which it throws its knife at the base, lowering it down to 1 HP. It also enters Void Rage mode, in which it summons twice the amount of enemies and and can no longer use the Void Slime ability, which is very convenient. Its final ability activates at 240,000 health, and which it speeds up dramatically, zooming to the exit. With all this in mind, I had to be very strategic with how I placed my towers. The basic setup looks like this. I had all my golden minigunners placed in the middle of the loop, 6 rangers in the back, 4 commanders in between them, and jesters placed all along the beginning of the track. All of these jesters were set to confusion and ice bombs, as their entire purpose was to stall out the vindicators and void reaver. One of the main things that makes a jester so broken is that the confusion and ice bombs affect any enemy, including the void reaver. That means you can slow the void reaver by 40% using the ice, and stall it for a whopping 2 seconds using a confusion bomb. This is incredibly helpful, and the main reason solo hardcore is even possible. While you only need 3 commanders to have 100% uptime on the ability, 4 commanders is often used for wave 50 as it makes timing the abilities much more comfortable. Guaranteeing that you 
you always have the Call of Arms ability active is worth the one golden minigunner you end up missing out on. With my setup ready, I decided to start streaming my attempts as I had a feeling this was going to take a while, but I had no idea just how painful this was going to be. My first stream was on the 20th of November, and unfortunately, because this was my first ever live stream, the quality was pretty bad. It will get better in the footage later on, but for now, you're just gonna have to deal with it. When I made it to wave 50, things seemed to be going pretty well. Although late, I managed to kill all the Vindicators, and I got on the Void Reaver down to 700,000 health. I was making sure to sell and rebuy my commanders if they got stunned, so that I could keep my ability up 100% of the time. However, as you'll see, the Void Reaver decided to Void Slam my Golden Minigunners, and I quickly ended up losing to the souls that had spawned. While this didn't deter my motivation, I was having a lot of issues. The Vindicators were super unreliable, and almost always got close to the exit. Since I wasn't able to kill them quickly, that was wasting a lot of time that could be spent damaging the Void Reaver. Not only that, I kept having my Golden Minigunners get Void Slammed, which was extremely frustrating. No matter how hard I tried to micro, I just couldn't win. I kept trying for two and a half hours until eventually giving up. On my next stream, I actually decided to start speaking, giving some really exciting narration about what's happening. I don't know why I decided I wanted to do this. Also, I was surprisingly doing a lot better. Not only was my early game much more consistent, on my first attempt, I managed to get this run. When the Void Reaver came out, I quickly sold and replaced my commander after it stomped. I had to stay focused on making sure their ability was up 100% of the time, otherwise I stood no chance of winning. While the Vindicators did stun my minigunners more than I wanted, they ended up dying pretty quickly, allowing my minigunners to focus on the Void Reaver. Its health slowly chipped down, and as it got out of my Jester's range, I made sure to sell and replace them. Making sure he was always getting confused and slowed down was super important and was just as valuable as keeping my commander's ability up. He used his voice slam ability and luckily he decided to target my jester allowing me to survive. In only a matter of time he had reached 600,000 health and entered his second stage. He chucked his sword at the base and ripped off his mask. At this point I no longer had to worry about him slow slamming and just had to remember to keep microing my jesters and commanders. I also started working on moving down my minigunners as he would soon be out of the way. I hastily sold and replaced him farther down the track hopefully letting them deal enough damage to kill him. He worked his way down the loop and at this point, I was really hoping he would use a summon ability. Every time he uses this ability, he stands completely still for 2 seconds, allowing my towers to deal a huge amount of extra damage. Also, the enemies he summons usually aren't a big deal, with the only problematic ones being unknowns, as he can stun my towers. If the Void Reaver instead decides to spam his stomp ability, I'm pretty much guaranteed to lose, as my towers will be stunned and the Void Reaver won't stand still at all. By the end of the loop, the Void Reaver had already reached 240,000 health and had now entered its third phase, where it sped up dramatically. I kept selling and replacing my minigunners, however, I was panicking and placed them in less favorable positions. Now that it was faster, I had much less room to work with and each placement was incredibly important. The Jester stun was also significantly more valuable as a 2 second stun from its confusion is much more effective against faster enemies. That means if I messed up a single Jester placement, I would not win. At around 150,000 health, he luckily used his summon ability, giving me more time to attack him. However, you can see a clear issue with my placement. In only a matter of seconds, 80% of my DPS was out of range. Even if I had the best micro in the world, there was no way I could move every golden minigunner fast enough. I managed to get the Void Reaver down to 30,000 health, but unfortunately, I lost. This left me pretty frustrated, which you can tell by my reaction. I don't know how I'm supposed to micro that faster. Obviously, something had to change. As you probably noticed, my microing skills weren't great. I struggled to quickly move my towers, and when I did replace them, it was in some pretty bad spots. Because I was placing them at the top of this loop, they could only attack the Void Reaver for a short amount of time before it went out of their range. I did another 6 hour stream the next day, however, things went relatively the same. I didn't manage to beat that 30k record, and the whole stream ended up being kind of a waste of time. But everything changed when I got help from someone incredibly experienced with solo and hardcore mode, Tom5551. This guy has beat solo hardcore over 25 times, and luckily, he decided he wanted to give me some tips. One of the first things he advised me on was the placement of my golden minigunners after I moved them. As I suspected, I was placing them too high up. Instead, he recommended I only place them on the sand parts, as that way they would still be in range once the Void Reaver got to a second phase. This made microing a lot less stressful, as my towers would remain in range much longer. The second thing he told me was that every time the Void Reaver stomped, I should prioritize replace my jesters before my commanders. Doing so would ensure the Void Reaver was always getting confused and slowed, which was overall more important than the commander's ability. Since all my golden minigunners were stunned, selling and replace my commander would only really aid my rangers, which wasn't a huge difference. Finally, the biggest help that Tom gave me was perfecting my jester's placement. Tom knows pretty much everything about how Vindicators work and is an expert at distracting them with other towers. The jester placements he gave me were as follows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. While it may look pretty similar to what I had before, trust me, there's a bunch of small changes that made a big difference. He also told me to move my commanders to the other side of the lane so that the hammer from the Vindicators would hopefully ricochet over to the Rangers. Rangers are immune to getting stunned, so whenever the Vindicators attack them is a huge win for me. 
With these new adjustments, I decided to hop on another stream. On my first attempt, it was clear that the new placements were working. The Vindicators ended up targeting the minigunners much less and got distracted by the Rangers, Commanders, and Jesters. This allowed me to lock onto the Void Reaver much quicker and begin chipping down on itself. Unfortunately, I had pretty bad luck this run and the Void Reaver kept stun spamming my towers. He ended up killing me at 89,000 health. Not bad, but it wasn't enough. On my second run, things went a whole lot better. First of all, the Vindicators died extremely fast, as I had a lot of luck when it came to their hammer targeting. This gave me an early advantage on the Void Reaver, shredding its health. The new Jester placements also ensured that it never hit my Golden Minigunners with a Void Slam, and things were looking great. On top of that, Tom also gave me some great advice that would make a huge difference in this run. You said like the Minigunners that are out of range on the, the right? Here? Like, just start microing the ones that are out of range already. By getting me to move my minigunners earlier, they would be able to attack the Void Reaver for a much longer period of time. Also, it gave me much more breathing room when it came to microwing and helped me focus on selling and replace my commanders and jesters. From the 10 hours I had already spent attempting this, my skills had gotten a lot better. I was much faster at reacting to stomps, quickly rebuying my jesters and commanders. This allowed my towers to deal way more DPS and further stalled the Void Reaver. He entered a second phase super early, which was a really good sign. If I could keep this up, this might actually be the winning run. I started to move all my commanders and the Void Reaver kept creeping along the track. But what I didn't realize was I was about to have some of the best luck ever. After only a few moments of moving, boom, one summon. Then after only one stomp, I got yet another summon. Because of that, the Void Reaver was already in its third stage before it had even gotten past the second loop. Immediately after that, he summoned again. I couldn't believe my luck, and neither could Tom. Then again, just a few steps later, he summoned for a fourth time. I had already gotten it down to 180,000 health. It seemed like there was no way for me to mess this up. All I had to do was keep microing my commanders and jesters and focus on moving my golden minigunners down. This is what everything came down to. 20 plus hours of streaming all led to this moment. But then, disaster struck. Because I was streaming, my computer started freaking out, not letting me move or place towers. I had to move my minigunners, but I simply couldn't. I was immobilized. My micro moved down to a snail's pace, and I panicked, desperately trying not to lose. As he rushed towards the exit, his health got closer and closer to zero. I watched in anticipation as I saw the boss's health drop from 10k to 5k, then 1k. There was no way I could lose when I'd finally gotten so close. The boss got down to 534 health, and to my horror, reached the exit, causing me to lose. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, getting the boss to 0.04% of his total health and then losing left me pretty messed up. I had dedicated 20 hours of my life to this and I lost all because my computer couldn't handle a live stream. I was absolutely devastated. As much as I wanted to quit, I felt pretty torn. I spent so much time trying to do this and now that I got so close, could I really just give up? Nah, we don't do that around here. I ended a live stream and decided I would do a couple of attempts off stream with Tom. And all I can say is I was locked in. Every single attempt, I will get the Void Reaver to at least 10,000 health, with my second attempt getting it down to 2,000. I could do this, it was only a matter of time. But my body needed to sleep, so I decided to continue the next day. When I woke up, I realized that day would be the last day I could attempt this before I would be busy for the next week. I had to get it today, and I only had a couple hours to do it. I needed to make every run count, otherwise the developers might nerf the Jester before I have a chance to beat it. That would make my 30 hours of gameplay mean nothing. Fortunately, on my first attempt, I got this run. My Vindicators died extremely quickly, way faster than in my closest run. That gave me a great head start on the Void Reaver, letting me damage it straight away. Also, it hardly stomped at all, instead choosing a Void Slam on my Jesters. That let me take it down to 600k super early, getting it into a second phase. Unfortunately, after that, it decided to do two stomps in a row. However, since most of my towers were already stunned, it wasn't that big of a deal. All I had to do was keep replacing my jesters and commanders, and I was fine. I also decided to move my commanders farther back, as I was going to have to do that later if I wanted to buff my golden minigunners. On top of that, I started selling and replacing my minigunners, trying to get ahead of the microwing. It was definitely stomping a lot more than I was hoping for, but it was still winnable. Especially since right after that, I got a really nice summon, allowing my minigunners to shred its health. Because of that, I managed to get it down to 240k really early. From this point on, I'm just going to let you guys see what happened. Finally, after 30 plus hours of trying, I had finally beat Solo Hardcore. 
I want to give a huge thanks to Winterstar for helping me out with the original strategy, Tom for giving me some amazing game changing advice, and Marcel and Galaxy for giving me feedback during the winning run. From my knowledge, this is the most challenging thing you can do in Tower Defense Simulator. Only a couple hundred players have ever beat this, making the percentage of people who have done this anywhere between 0.1% to 0.04%. I'm super happy that I managed to do this, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Of course, please leave a like and subscribe, as I might make the 30 hours I spend feel worth it. Also, I'd like to give a huge thanks to these channel members, as they help make these videos possible and motivate me to keep posting. But, that's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.